Peace, family. All right, so we in the car. Y'all know what it is. When we get in the car, it's time to have real discussion. Um, I was out there trying to tame the Serengeti. It all of a sudden got blazing hot. And so I started doing other things, you know, that don't require me to just be out in the beating heat the whole time. So now I'm in my car taking a break and I figured I would uh, talk to y'all for a minute. Um, this subject is one that I kind of have wrestled with for a while. Like it's probably been about maybe actually a year. Um, I was kind of going back and forth on whether or not I would address this topic. Um, but I feel like it's necessary, especially given the time that we're in. I feel like it's necessary for me to do that. And I feel like I would be irresponsible with what I have in regards to like a platform if I didn't address it. So the title of this video, can we save the earth? And then the answer, absolutely not. What do I mean by that? What am I saying by that? Am I pessimistic? Now I'm very much an optimist. You know, do I feel like um, depressed about things? Do I feel like there's no hope? Now I don't feel like that either, but I'm realistic. And I feel like we can't address the big issue, which is saving the earth until we address smaller personal issues. Well, I'm not going to say smaller, but we have to address other issues before we can address that issue. And here's what I'm talking about. So what prompted this subject? Um, I was watching a video a while back. Like I said, it's probably, probably been like a year or so. And it was by, uh, it was a Park Rose permaculture video. A lady by the name of Angela, I've mentioned her before. Um, she's got a lot of good information, but one of the things that she talked about was, you know, buying local. I can't remember the name of the video that she did where she mentioned it. And that wasn't the first time I heard that before. But it kind of struck a nerve for some reason when she said it. Not because of her. It's just that it, it kind of triggered something for me. For whatever reason that day when she mentioned it. You know, do I disagree with buying local as a solution to a lot of our... Uh, issues when it comes to you know food and economy nah I think buying local is it would be awesome that would be an awesome you know solution or step in solving a lot of issues you know you buy local you can kind of guarantee that you're getting fresh real food um, you buy local you're supporting your local economy you're supporting local business owners um, you're strengthening local economies you're taking away a lot of the power that these big food companies have over our communities and ideally these business owners not just food people but local business owners in general will give back to the community that supports them that's ideally how it would be but what if local don't want you what do you do when local does not want you and they express to you in one form or another that they don't care nothing about how much money you're spending in their establishment. They don't want you there. So, story. Honey Bee and I went to, this was a few years ago. This is an example of what I'm talking about. And this is something that, this is an example of a, an issue, a real chronic issue. But we went to a uh, an apple orchard to pick apples. Honey Bee makes great uh, apple pies. I mean, she makes the best apple pies, man, with fresh apples. So we were going to the apple orchard to get some apples. Now, I don't know if all apple orchards are set up the same way, but the way it works, I'm not gonna mention their name because I don't even want to give them that. Um, you buy baskets, and depending on the size of your basket, that determines how much your apples are gonna be when you get to the register, right? So what people do, and this wasn't the first time we had been there. We had been there a few times before. And actually, I think uh, Honey Bee had gone there by herself a few times. But we decided one day to just go. What people would do is they would buy, just say a small basket is like, you know, you end up paying eight bucks for the apples. If you can fill up a small basket. Uh, medium size would be like 12. 
and then a large size would be like, just say 15. These are hypothetical numbers, you know, that I'm using. But what people would do is just say a medium basket holds 12 apples. You know, they get their medium basket, but they really need like 20 apples. What they would do is they would fill up their basket, but overfill it to the point where when you get to the register, if you can hold it in the basket without spilling your apples, then you can get those apples at that medium price. This is the way that it's been. This is what people do. In fact about it, we've seen people in this on this particular day, there were people in front of us that had apples that were stacked so high that they had to have other people help them. They get to the register, oh honey, you got your apples. Oh, you have a great day, honey. We get to the register and I'm not gonna diminish how we did it. I'm not gonna make it smaller and I'm not gonna make it more than what it actually is. We did what we usually do. We had our basket. I held it down, you know, in front of me. Some of the apples were over top. They were leaning on my torso, but they were still technically part of that basket. It wasn't like an astronomical amount of apples because we didn't need a whole lot of apples. We just did what we normally do. You know, we didn't take it overboard. We just did what we normally do. We got to the register. The lady, the cashier went ham. She went ham. She starts yelling about how we took too many apples and we need to put some back. Now, how the hell do you take apples, excuse me, that you pick off of a tree and put them back? We need to put some of them back or get a larger basket and pay more. It was so bad that the lady at the other, other register was kind of chiming in. We said, you know what? Nah, we just left. We left because it was BS. Now, here's the thing. You see situations, and I'ma say, I'm, you know, cause I don't sugarcoat stuff. I feel like it was a race thing, honestly, because the people that were in front of us were Caucasian, they had no issues. We come and then all of a sudden, you know, all hell breaks loose. I mean, that's just what it is. Let's call a spade a spade. You see situations where, you know, you'll have, uh, you see this in the news or online and stuff like that a black person will go into an establishment. A lot of times it's like these high-end stores and they get mistreated by the people that are behind the counter or that are greeting people. And they go back and forth. And then the person, the customer, will still buy the product because they want that product so bad. They'll buy it and then leave. It's almost like they want to prove to them that they could afford, because a lot of times they tr they treat them as if they don't think they can afford what's in that store. And they'll buy these things almost like they want to prove a point, like be careful who you talk to like that because, you know, I might actually have the money to buy it. Listen, that's not VA. I don't give a damn if you think that I can't afford what it is that you're selling. You mistreat me in your establishment. I'm not spending my money there. I don't care what you think. You can think all you want. You can go home and say, hey, honey, I had to throw out this broke black dude because he was in the store trying to act like he was gonna buy so I know he's gonna steal something. You can think that if you want. I don't feel the need to prove a point to you. I feel like I would, I'm not gonna spend my hard earned money to prove to you that I can do that. You know what I mean? So we left and we've had other experiences like that where we've just left. I'm not gonna I'm not entertaining that stuff as far as like proving anything to you. You know, I'll express my thoughts to you in regards to your behavior, but I'm not gonna spend my money there. Um, that's just one example out of many. Another quick one, we went into the mall one day. It was me, Honey Bee, and my kids. And, um, and actually, I think there was some family friends too. We went into a mall and there was a guy that was selling, I guess it was hot sauces and sauces that he had made. I had never seen that store before. So I was like, you know, I like hot sauce. You know, I'm not into sweet sauces, but I do like hot sauces. So I'm walking around, I'm really looking at the label. I mean, most of them didn't look interesting, but there were some that looked pretty interesting. Like as far as like different flavors he had and stuff like that. So we're all walking around in the store looking and I'm like pointing out this flavor, this flavor, this flavor. Turn around and look and notice everywhere we go, every nook and cranny we was in, this guy, this man, the owner, who was also behind the counter, was following us around the store. And 
I looked at him kind of confused because I'm thinking to myself, well, I'm not thinking to myself, but I'm, I'm so intrigued by these labels, by these flavors. Then it hits me. And before I even realized that I was saying it out loud, I said, oh, he thinks we're going to steal his sauces. I said it out loud. He heard it. He didn't deny it. He just looked. I said, oh, okay, let's go. We all filed out the store. I'm not gonna spend money in a place where you're mistreated, you know, just to prove to you that I can spend money. So let's bring this, let's wrap this around. What does that have to do with saving the earth? You know, you hear a lot of people, they may have great intentions, you know, about, especially like in, in the growing spaces, you have like the permaculture movement and things like that where they talk about, oh, let's feed the soil, you know, let's plant this way, let's do it the way nature does. You know, we wanna uh, sequester carbon and, and stuff like that. And that all sounds great, you know, but how can you say that you love nature, but you hate me because I'm black? And I don't mean just me specifically, I'm just saying like, you say you love the earth, but then you, you hate someone because they're black. Or if I said, I want to save the earth, but I hate Asian people. Or, you know, you may say, someone may say they want to save the earth, but they hate Hispanic people. Like, where does that make sense? The thing is, we got it backwards, man. We got it backwards. We can't love the earth, but hate the very beings and creatures that the earth produced. You understand? A lot of people... You know, they may say it, they may not verbally say it, but you can kind of tell in their language that they're, they're spiritual people. They believe in, you know, spiritual principles. You know, well, in the book it says, you know, how can you love God who you've never seen, but hate your brother that you see every day? What does God have to do with nature? Nature is called nature because nature is the spirit and essence of God himself. And this is the essence that flows through all of us in one aspect or another. You can't say that you love God, but in the back of your mind, deep in the crevices of your mind, or maybe in the forefront of your mind, you dislike black people, or you dislike Asian people, or you dislike anybody that's not like you. You know, it just doesn't work that way. What does it mean when it says, you know, how can you love, how can you say you love God, who you've never seen, but hate your brother that you see every day. What does that mean? Because that's loaded. You know, for one, it means that there's levels to that love thing. You know, you gotta get, you gotta graduate from step one before you can get to step three. You know, step one is you have to love yourself. Step two would be you have to love your neighbor. You have to love people around you. And then step three is you can love God and love nature and love all that stuff. When we realize that love is not like an emotion, you may not feel emotionally connected to someone that's different than you, but it's an action. It's, a, it's an action based on the decision that you make. When you decide, you know what? I don't know nothing about that person's culture, but I'm gonna love them anyway, just off of the basis that they're a human being created by the same creator that I was created, in, created by. They have, the same essence flowing through them that I have flowing through me, which is the same essence flowing through nature and the universe itself. You understand what I'm saying? You can't love God and you can't love nature if you don't love each other. If we can't love each other, if we can't decide that we're gonna love each other, we can't, there's no way of doing it. And, and, and here's what I'll say too. Even if you can't find it in you to love someone else, because you're not going to love everybody. I mean, let's just be realistic. There's certain people that you're not going to love, you know, justified or unjustified. And there are justified circumstances where that doesn't apply. But if you dis, if you decide that you hate someone and they've never personally done anything to you, then there's a problem there. But if you decide that you don't, you can't find it in you to just love others. At least be decent to other people just off of the, the fact that they're a fellow human being. You know, 
the whole buying local thing, man, I, you know, it's, I'm not gonna say that I've only been mistreated. And I'm not trying to be a victim. I'm just trying to make a point. I'm not gonna say that we've only experienced that type of thing with local businesses. It's businesses in general. But I would say if we went to like, just say 50 local establishments, no exaggeration, we probably have been mistreated at about 35. So it's discouraging. You know, you kind of go into these establishments with your guard up, you know, thinking, you know, where are you coming from? You know, what are you gonna to try to say or do? And then your behavior, whether you like it or not, in a lot of cases, is based off of the way that they treat you. So, I feel like people have good intentions, but I feel like it's almost arrogant in a lot of cases to say that you're in it to save the earth, but you just, you hate people because they're different from you. Especially, like I said, if they've never personally done anything to you. It would be like, so for, for those of you women that have children, you have children, you know, married or not, you, you have children. Just put yourself in this situation mentally. You're out, just say you're single, but you have your children. You meet a guy, man, and he's wonderful, man. He says all the right things. You know, he wants to take care of you. He, he's, he professes his love to you from the rooftops. But he tells you, but I, I hate your kids, man. You know, I love you, but I can't stand them, them damn kids. You keep them grim lords away from me. I want to kill your kids. If they come around me, I'm not going to treat them well, so you might as well just leave them wherever you got to leave them. There's me and you, I'm going to love you to the day that I die, but I hate your children. Like, would you entertain a relationship with a man like that? Hell no. You know, not any reasonable, sensible parent or human being. How are you going to say that you love me, but you hate what I produced? Now here's the thing, maybe the earth don't wanna be healed by us. The earth is perfectly capable of healing herself. Thank you very much. And she's living. The earth is a living being. And we say that, but I don't think we really understand it and appreciate it for what it actually is. The earth is a, a living being. The earth has a consciousness. If the earth has water on it, and it's already proven that water has a consciousness, then the earth has to have a consciousness as well. The earth is alive. You think that she appreciates us saying, well, we love you, but we hate each other when she produced us? That's like the mother with the children. Like, she, it doesn't make any sense. So maybe she's like, I don't want your help. This is why I said, no, we can't save the planet we're not going to be able to save the earth because we can't get along with each other you know and and there's a lot of us do but in a lot of situations you know we don't and we see this on the news and on social media now we see this almost daily it becomes sickening it's like depressing you know when the only true relief from this crap is when you're you know pedaling around in your garden and i mean of course you know a lot of cases now it's too hot to even be doing that you gotta we gotta look at things differently going back to what it said in that book um how can you love god who you've never seen and hate your brother that you see every day i told you that's loaded what else does that mean you know there's a scripture actually a few in the book that also says ye are all gods children of the most high god now let's put that together. If you say that you love God, this being that you imagine in your head, I'm not saying he's not real, I'm just saying you you got to imagine loving somebody that you did, you've never seen, right? But you hate your brother, you hate your neighbor who's different from you, who is also a human being created in the image and likeness of God, who is also a God, children of the most high, a child of the most high God, there's not no way that you can really honestly profess your love for God or for nature. There's no way. It just doesn't, the math don't math like they say. You know, when it says that we're 
God's children of the Most High. God, it means that we are all blessed with the very essence of him. His spirit and his essence flows through all of us, just like it flows through nature. We're all connected. All of us are connected. We're connected to each other. We're connected to nature. We talk about the fungal web and how it connects different plants. And in some cases, there's webs that are as large as football fields that connect plants all over the place. You know, roots are able to communicate all over the planet because of these fungal webs. We're connected like those fungal webs. We have the same essence, the same uh, access to information, the same spirit that God placed in the first being is in all of us. And if we could make the decision to love each other, or at least be decent to each other, then we have a chance. But until then, nah, we don't have a chance to do it. The earth is going to heal itself without us. Mark my words. I'm not saying that like, you know, we'll all be wiped out or something like that, but it's not going to happen, you know, just through our assistance because I don't think she appreciates the way that we treat each other. So she's not gonna to wanna to cooperate with you. Would you cooperate with somebody that said they hated your children? No. So anyway, um, that's pretty much all that I wanted to say. I, I wanted to express that because these are real experiences. These things, you know, there's certain things, certain subject matters that get uncomfortable and you know, you run the risk of like losing people when you talk about these things. But I wouldn't be, I would be irresponsible, like I said, with the platform, even if it never reaches a high number. As humble as my channel is, I feel responsible to discuss these things because these are real life experiences. Like what's the point of me being, you know, uh, online friends with you and communicating with you and, you know, trying to build connections with people if I can't express to you the, the real issues, the real experiences that I go through or that we go through as a community. You can't do it. So just be on the alert. Like if you stay with me, if I'm in the car, nine times out of 10, it's gonna be a real issue that I'm discussing. If I'm out in the garden, I'm talking about the garden stuff. I mean, it's all connected. It's all connected. But anyway, give me your thoughts in the comments and um, I'll see you all in the next one. Peace.